do you recommend including a braiding hair with the services? Can you please do a video on how you manage money in a hair business? Which money is for your personal use and which money is for buying products, etc. I'm a new braider for like a week now and I absolutely love it, but I'm sad because my thumbs hurt and lock up. How do I get rid of that? It says, how do you turn down clients that arrive to the appointment with complete disregard for your hair preparation instructions? Also someone that shows up over 20 minutes late and insists that it's okay. These are two big no-no's that you get one time. <laughs> you get one time. We're like diamonds in the sky. I knew that way back on one right away. Oh, right away. At first sight, I felt energy. That's the right. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel on behalf of Britt. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Brittany, and today's video is a girl talk. We are back with the girl talks. It's been about six months since I made one of these videos, and so y'all have been waiting. I've been ready to get back to it, and so we're back. They are back. I have a few topics I want to roll out, but I could not bring back the continuation of this series without doing this particular video that I'm going to do today. After today's video, which is addressing some of y'all some of y'all's questions and giving y'all advice directly from your comments on my videos from previous girl talks, then we'll roll out all of the new topics. But I got to clear up some of the questions and some of the smoke, not the smoke, but some of the confusion that's been in the air regarding some of the things that I have mentioned in previous videos. So just catching up, just recapping here, let's do like a little review before I go into today's topic. If you have missed some of them, my very first video was advice to new stylists and I told you 10 things that you can do to just get your business started. My second video was all of my essential tools and products. Every single tool I use to run my business, I went through every product. I need to do an updated video because my products and different things that I've used um, have changed over the past couple of years. That video is probably almost two years old now. And one of y'all's personal favorite videos from this series was the pros and cons as a braider where I went through all of the things I love about being a braider and all of the things that I don't like so much about being a braider. All of the things that have made me reconsider doing this at some time in my life or some point in my career. I was just naming a few, but there are a whole lot more than that. So I've done 19 videos. What else can I say? What else can I possibly teach you guys about being a braider? I went through some of the old videos and I'm reading comments where recently y'all have come back and said different things or asked different questions and somehow I missed y'all's comments. So I chose 10 different questions that I thought were really good, really juicy, and I'm going to address them in today's video and that's what the topic will be, just giving you advice off of what you have asked me. Y'all excuse my hair, if it's unattractive to y'all, don't let it be a distraction. I call myself like twisting my hair up in a style. It's like eight or nine different twists going up. And it looks real cute from the side, but I don't know what the front is doing. I tried to tuck this and swoop that, and it's a lot going on. I'm trying to see if it's going to grow on me or not, but hey, let me just get straight into the questions. But I screenshotted them, and I'm going to put them on the screen too so you can read them in case I go through the questions too fast. But the first question, I'm going to just do them in the order that I screenshot them, y'all. It says, do you recommend including a braiding hair with the service? This is a great question. Yes, a million times yes. Today, in today's time, if you're starting out as a new braider in 2023, now that knotless braids are on the rise, these boho styles with the curls left out, those are styles where you have to put the hair on the rack and place it because you're individually grabbing pieces as you go. Tribal braids, Fulani braids, feed-in braids, stitch braids. All of those different styles now is coming to me y'all all of those styles require you to like pre-rack the hair pre-separate the hair majority of the styles that are trending right now in today's time require prep and for that reason and a couple others which i'm going to name those reasons too I think that it is 100% necessary now for you to be providing the hair. It'll cut down appointment time, especially with you being a new braider and trying to pick up the speed. You're already slow with braiding, gripping, dealing with different hair types, dealing with different people, getting your rhythm going and everything. That's one less thing you'll have to worry about if you already have the hair on hand. Another reason why it's a good reason to... Hold on, I'm getting a phone call. Well, I can just tie it up and I'm good to go. Yes. And when you order it, pay attention to the inches, auntie. You don't want to get nothing too long. Amazon give you a variety of inches to choose from and colors. How many inches do you think I need to have? Come on. 
Um, I would say get a, a 24 inch so when you fold it over it's 12 inches and it got to be long enough for her to be able to pin it up because the style that you sent me is pinned up. So I would say get like a 24 inch so it's long enough for her okay. to you know put it in that style for you. Okay. Alright. Well, thank you Brittany. That's all I need. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Okay y'all we was interrupted by one of my aunties. That was my auntie Mildred. Um my family be hitting me up for hair advice just like y'all so i keep looking this way the camera is this way i don't know why i'm doing that but anyway another reason why you should provide the hair outside of it cutting down the appointment time and you already having a hair prep when the client gets here it also gives you the privilege to choose the type of hair that you work with as a new braider you're going to soon find out that there are a lot of brands that you're going to prefer working with over other brands some brands are a little rougher they'll cut your fingers some of them produce better looking braids so like the quality of the hair comes out makes your work look reflects your work a little bit better so over time that's just something you'll learn starting out another reason why it's good to go through a vendor and order all of your hair in bulk online one of the reasons why i'm about to really just gear towards that route i'm in a big city that's overpopulated sometimes hair stores are sold out of rua sometimes depending on the location especially my clients that live in the inner city like downtown the hair stores are limited to what they offer down there they have to drive way out to find certain brands that I like to use so it would just weed out more drama on their end if I just already had it here and just charge the extra fee in my price for them to just show up and I already have what I need to achieve the style this might be my favorite question of the video um, and this I have answered in a lot of my vlogs if y'all watch my vlogs so pay attention to the braided vlogs too y'all because a lot of times things that I don't address in my girl talks are in my everyday life like just me experiencing different clients and I vlog like my day-to-day -day appointments I try to weekly put a few appointments in my um, vlogs as well as hair store runs and different things that I discover along the way in my day-to-day -day life I'm constantly growing and learning things daily and I'm talking to you guys in my vlogs as I discover stuff. But like I said, this is one of this is a really good question. And she says, Hey, can you please do a video on how you manage money in a hair business? Which money is for your personal use and which money is for buying products, etc.? So for my new braiders, um, and for people that are in the game, if you're a stylist, a braider, a makeup artist, a nail tech, and you're watching this, you know that doing hair isn't like just a retail job where you show up and everything that you need to sell or everything that you need to do your job is already there. If you're working for a retail store, let's just say you work at Macy's, the perfume, the makeup, the clothing, household items, all of that stuff is already there. All you got to do is just sell it. As a braider, running your own business, starting everything up from the ground up, nothing that you would need to run your business is just going to fall out of the sky. You have to acquire everything. Everything in this room, if y'all have been through this tour of my room, I have acquired over the years to make my business run. So the chair that I sit in, the chair my clients sit in, blow dryers, edge controls, mousse, all of that different stuff you have to provide. And so I felt like this was a really good question for her to ask. Like, yeah, I'm making in this money, but I also got to pay my bills. And if you're a full-time braider, you're not like me where I work a nine to five and I still braiding is just something I do on the side. If you're trying to go full-time with this, it's going to be a challenge for you to try to budget this out. I can see logically where she's thinking like, I'm new to this. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to pay my rent, pay my lights, pay my internet, and try to run a business and keep all of this inventory in stock. The best way to do it, the way that I do it, that I mentioned in my vlogs and it works for me, is I use tip money. That's money that I was not expecting to get. I don't know from one day to the next, from one client to the next, who's going to tip and how much they're going to tip. So where I may be calculating in my head what I'm going to make per week based on who books and what they book, I know I'm going to bring in $200 on this day or $400 on the next day or whatever the case may be based on what the appointment is. I don't know if that $100 appointment is going to tip me $50 and that be 150 so what I do is all of the money that I know for sure I'm bringing in when a person books the appointment that's my money for personal use for bills car note gas groceries whatever it is that I already need to survive and then tips which is the money that I'm not accounting for the money that I don't know is going to come in that's the money I use to get all of this stuff so there are some weeks where people tip good I may make $300 in tips one week then there are some weeks where I only make $30 in tips where a person might, might have tipped me $5 here 
two dollars there seven dollars here just to round up whatever they had in their pocket loose cash loose ones and so at the end of the week i may have thirty dollars on that $300 week, my goal is just to go big. That's why y'all might see me in some videos. Um, a lot of times when I get those big weeks or I have a lot of money to spend in the hair store, I try to vlog. I only spend my tip money. On a good week, I try not to splurge, take that money, and do anything else other than pour it into my business because I know there will be bad weeks where I don't get as much and I'm going to need my inventory to be fully stocked. So that's what I do. Next question says, hello, dear. Which way would you consider is best to practice when you barely get clients apart from practicing on a mannequin? Over a free hair day to friend. I think she meant to say offer. Offer a free hair day to friends or to give them a discount. I am a beginner and I want to find ways to build my page, but I have been looking for other ways to establish that. I need help. It's making me want to give up slowly. Aw, don't give up. The first thing I was going to suggest is a mannequin, but you said aside from that, and I can understand why you don't want to practice on a mannequin because although the mannequin's hair can be very realistic, it still isn't a real person's hair. The texture of it no matter how close they try to get it to ours it's never on point to that and it's also hard trying to get the mannequin stable it's, it's so many different things that can go wrong where you're based on all of your practice on a mannequin and then when a real live client comes I could see where there could be issues there so you gave me two options you didn't even tell me to come up with a way for you to practice you gave me options you said should you offer a free day to friends where you're basically styling all of your friends hair for free or give them a discount I would say give a freebie um, and I'm not saying all of your friends if you got six seven friends a full day of doing all of their hair would just be crazy get that one solid friend one bestie one close cousin somebody just one person you ain't got to be out here just styling heads for free styling the neighborhood for free get you one solid person for me growing up it was my mother and my sister living in a household with two other women it just worked out for me and myself um, especially if you're if you struggle with the gripping, if you know like the way it looks and like your quality of work isn't there yet to be charging anything, I would say start off for free, but only do that for one particular person. For me also, I also gather a lot of my experience on my own head. Do you not try to braid your own hair? I know a lot of people struggle with parting, seeing the back of their hair, but me, because it's harder to part my own hair, because it's harder, it takes more time for me to reach up, get in my own hair, my arms get tired. A lot of times when I master a style on my hair, on my own hair, and I know that I've mastered it and I can get it achieved on my own hair, I already know that it's not going to be any issue for a client. If I can achieve it on myself with parting, all of that, it makes it so much easier when it's time to do it on someone else because it's someone else. I can actively stand over them and see what I'm doing. So a lot of times I try to challenge myself to achieve it on myself first, and then from there I feel like it's a piece of cake. So... I would say practice on yourself if you don't want to practice on a mannequin or one close friend for free from time to time. The next one is I'm a new braider for like a week now and I absolutely love it but I'm sad because my thumbs hurt and lock up. How do I get rid of that or help with that? Can any braiders help please? So she in my comments like if anybody is reading this help me out my hands hurt which I'm not going to say is strange but it's something that I didn't experience right off rip. You're saying that you a couple of days into being a braid of your hands already cramping. So it has to be something with the way you're positioning your hands. Um, some people think that it takes this aggressive grip to achieve braids and it doesn't take all that. I would say an ice bath or either there's different hand creams, hand therapy that you can rub into your um, hands. With the ice bath, it's self-explanatory. You're going to get like a bucket or a bowl of ice and fill it up with Epsom salt and just sit your hands in it. And I have a video for that. I have also done a video on that within this series. Please go through my Life as a Braider playlist and look through all of the videos if you're struggling with any of these things that I've already talked about. I've answered them before, but there's a video and I'll link it down below if I can remember number two um, on how to deal with pain and discomfort as a braider this is another good one <laughs> it says how do you turn down clients that arrive to the appointment with complete disregard for your hair preparation instructions also someone that shows up over 20 minutes late and insists that it's okay 
these are two big no-nos so a lot of people trip and go on and on on social media about how i ain't booking with no hairstylists if it look like they cursing me out and their policies if i go on their booking link and it look like they doing too much i ain't booking with them but if you really read through it and you take the time to understand instead of being combative as to why we had a policies and why certain things are set in stone it's for your convenience and for our data to flow smoother so what she's saying is she has hair preparation guidelines in her policy and a lot of people will show up with their hair not prepared and i have a video for that on how to prepare prep your hair for a braid appointment for particular stylists who are like this and want your hair to come either blown out detangled whatever i personally don't mind doing that as long as your hair is clean because i'm not a braider who washes hair i can deal with the detangling blowing out all of that i personally include that in my service but for someone who doesn't and wants you to come wash and blow dry um, talking to braiders who have these policies you want your client to already just come prep where they just sit down their hair is clean washed detangled stretch and you just want to be able to braid and they come to you with sweaty musky nasty hair just took a hairstyle out didn't wash their hair or washed it and let it draw down and didn't comb it out or stretch it send them home <laughs> send them home the person coming to your place of business whether it's your home or your salon, wherever you may work, and they've come out of their way, they've purchased hair, they've paid a deposit that can get really ugly, but you have your policies in line for a reason. If they can't follow that, matter of fact, I'll say, go ahead and take them that first time. If you have the time, if it permits, like let's just say they're, they're your first client of the day and you know you'll have a little gap later in the day where it won't really affect your day too much to blow dry the hair, charge them an extra fee and just go ahead and detangle it and say, hey, you know, you may have overlooked my policy. You may have not had the time to detangle your hair or prep your hair for your appointment. I'm going to go ahead and prepare it, but this can't happen again. Next time you show up to my place of business and your hair isn't washed or your hair isn't detangled, I'm not going to be able to take you. And you weed it out like that. Now, if their hair is just sour, funky, they showed up to your house and they didn't wash their hair and you know you don't wash hair in your house, then send them away. And the reason why I say that and I'm not trying to be nasty when I say it is because you're going to teach people how to treat you. If you let them get away with it and just say, okay, girl, I'll go ahead and wash it because you're thirsty for that money or you were expecting that money and you don't want to turn them away because you don't want to turn down the funds that you would have gotten from them. Then you're teaching them that they can just come back. Oh, because if I show up, however I want to show up, she's still going to take me because she be wanting that money. She bought her money. It just creates this whole train wreck of you constantly getting people that see your policies, but um, don't respect them. So I would say just delete that out by sending them home or warning them and letting them know this is a one-time thing. Next time I can't service you. And then it was a two-part question. The next thing was, um, what do you do if they're 20 minutes late and they insist on staying or they insist, what did it say? Out of it too fast. They insist that that's okay. Um, I always give my clients a, a grace period. I personally stay about 30 minutes outside of the city. So anyone that actually lives in Atlanta, it's going to take them 30 minutes to get to me. And that's not including traffic. If it's rush hour, oh, <laughs> you're close to an hour to get into me. A lot of people know that immediately when you book, especially if it's your first time booking and I know you're coming to me, it's not a house call or anything like that. I'm going to send you my address immediately when you book. So you know at the day that you book, whether it's a week in advance, two weeks in advance, how far that you have to travel if you put that address in when you get it and so you can prepare for that if you know your appointment is at four and I live an hour away you need to be leaving your house between 2 30 and 3 o'clock I give them 15 minute grace period of no fee no nothing you can still come to me 15 minutes late and it'd be fine after 30 minutes you're canceled though so between 15 to 20 minutes you're saying 20 minutes late that pissed you off like they were insisting and it was okay you was like hell no nah. um if they're pulling that and you're not okay with it and you warrant them that you don't accept late clients or you don't accept clients after um a certain time send them home a lot of people don't realize or don't think because a lot of people are thinking about themselves their needs their wants they want their hair done they book with you they pay the deposit they 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 them 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 they don't realize that we as stylists still have lives too. And if you're at the top of the day and you're late, it then affects the people coming behind you, which, push, which pushes the whole day back. So I can understand how that could be frustrating. And I'll just tell you, warn them 
or letting them get by with it once if that was her first time ever showing up to you late and she felt like she had a valid excuse um one and done girl you came to me 20 minutes late today and i'll go ahead and take you because you're not usually late but next time i'm gonna have to send you home and that's how i deal with that you get one time <laughs> you get one time and you can't have and I've done a story time on this before. I ain't gonna say her name, but we got into it real bad because I let her slide with it one time and she tried me again and I did not answer my door for her. Next question was, would it be culture inappropriate for me, a white woman, to learn to braid like this? I'm asking because this level of braiding is just pure artwork and people who can put patience and time into this and make it look elegant like yourself is straight talent, OMG. First of all, thank you so much. This was under a vlog, actually. It did not come from my girl talks. This popped up in my notifications because it's something that she commented on a recent video. And I thought that I would address it in this video because I'm realizing that my demographics are more than just black women, more than just young braiders, new braiders. And I appreciate this question. At first, I looked at it like, hmm, you know, she was like culture inappropriate. And I do realize that braiding is like a black culture, like an African-American thing. It's something very major to our culture very significant within our culture definitely is but i am a person who was all about women empowerment every color no matter your race i believe that any girl can do anything girls run the world so to answer your question you absolutely can become a braider you absolutely can learn to braid like this if you are into braiding you have braided before and you feel like you have the skill that can develop into something great and you want to start taking clients absolutely try to get out there as a matter of fact I follow multiple Caucasian braiders, multiple braiders from different nationalities all over it. TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. I don't know about y'all if y'all are watching and y'all are an influencer or y'all make content of any sort. But me as a braider, I love watching other braiders. I love watching braider vlogs. I love watching videos like this where other stylists are talking about different things that they deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. I feel like... Because it's my field of interest and something that I'm interested in, I love seeing people's different points of view or their experiences. And if it's somebody that I look up to, I'm watching you weekly or even daily because I feel like I can learn from you and grow from you. I know a lot of lifestyle vloggers or a lot of lifestyle content creators that just vlog their day-to-day -day life, going to buy clothes and doing try-on hauls. A lot of them also watch a bunch of lifestyle vlogs and try-on hauls because that's what they're into. With that being said, let me tell y'all about one of my favorite braiders on TikTok. Her name is Rachel Lauren. She is a Caucasian braider, y'all, and she is a beast. When I tell you this woman can braid, she can braid. I will put a couple of her TikToks on either side of the screen, just little snippets of it or whatever. You need that drive or that push to be able to see other women that look like you doing the same thing. I promise you there's somebody out there doing it. Rachel Lauren is an amazing braider. I aspire to be as skilled as her one day. Her suite, her salon, wherever she works from, it's very neat, very clean. All of her customers are almost always laughing, conversing in the videos, smiling in the videos. She just seems like she gives off this great customer service. She has a lot of viral moments, like millions of views on some of her videos. A beast. Rachel, if you, if you want to know if white women can do it, she is a prime example. Love her down. Next question is, so cute. Can you do a, I don't even remember what video this was, but she put hard eyes and put so cute. Can you do a how to build your clientele video without working for free as a beginner? I don't have no friends. And that goes back to a couple questions ago when I was telling you when someone said, aside from using a mannequin, how can I learn how to braid? Do I do my friends hair for free or do I charge them but with a discount? This particular person is saying she don't have no friends, so how does she learn? And again, I will say practice on yourself. And if you haven't yet tried a mannequin, try some things on a mannequin. A mannequin wouldn't be good for something like Fulani braids or braids that require a whole bunch of designs because of the way that the particle, the hair particles are like stitched into the mannequin's head. It's not like ideal for parting if you're learning how to part because where is my mannequin? I don't even know where my mannequin is. I would show y'all, but there's a big difference in the way that their hair is manufactured versus 
how our hair is so it's not a tool that you can use to learn how to part or like a lot of different techniques but for gripping if you just need to learn how to grip or if you just want to pick up speed on how to get through a braid once you catch the hair I would say a mannequin is top tier for learning how to grip, especially because mannequin hair can be kind of slick, kind of silky. If you can catch a grip on mannequin hair, you can catch a grip on anyone. And so for you who's saying you don't have any friends, have you tried a mannequin and have you tried practicing on yourself? Yourself is honestly the best. Like any makeup artist is watching that learn how to beat their face on their own before they started. Come on now. Taking clients. That was my main way like the reason why i am the braider i am today is because i'm constantly going places and people are like i love your hair who did it me or people are like can you refer me to the braider that did your hair your hair looks so good i did it let me give you my information like not only is it practice for me to try different things but it's walking promo like <laughs> this style right here i can't tell y'all how many people have booked or reached out to me since doing this style last but not least you guys I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up with this video because I feel like this video is gonna be 45 minutes long and I don't want to be talking for a whole hour it says hi can you choose the styles for your client or you have them send you the style that they want before an appointment and I want to say this is a good question too can you choose styles for your client or have them send the style they want before an appointment. I'm not understanding if you're asking this as a new braider, you're still trying to learn a certain skill and you want to suggest a style to a client because that's something that you've been wanting to learn. If that's the case, the answer is a no. I wouldn't say try out a style for a first time on a client. I don't think that's what you're saying, but just in case you are, let me go ahead and clear that up. Don't choose a style on your client to do on them if it's your first time doing it. When you start taking a client, and by when I say client, I mean somebody that's a paying client that you're charging a fee for, you want to make sure that you're not playing in nobody's head and you've mastered the skill if you're going to be um, spending time to do it, you know, taking up time and taking their money. But as far as choosing a style for them, if you're years in the game, I would say if they're throwing out options to you and they're indecisive about it and they want your advice and they're saying I don't know what to do with my hair. I see that you offer so many different things. I love all of your work. What do you think I should get? Then, yeah, definitely um, suggest which one or help them decide based on their hair type, based on the occasion, where they're going, how long they want to keep it in. You can definitely throw out suggestions. Absolutely. And then it says, or do you have them send, you, send the style that you want before an appointment? And 90 times out of 100, that's what happens. When a person seeks me to get their hair done, whether they find me on Instagram or they're a regular client and they're reaching out to me because they have something coming up and they want braids, nine times out of 10, they already know what they want to get. So it's rare that I have to consult with a, a client on a style unless they are indecisive about the style. They've been coming to me for a while, but they want to try something new because they're always getting the same thing. They want to do something different. It's like, girl, should I get this? But for the most part, when a person reaches out to a person for braids, they already know they already know what they're coming to get and if they don't then yes you can throw out some suggestions and yeah that will conclude today's girl talk someone was asking me about being a new braider really loving doing hair really really loving their skill they found a new passion they feel like they found their purpose but they love wearing nails and they're struggling to get through their hair appointments I'm going to leave y'all on a cliffhanger with that and we're going to address that in next month's Girl Talk. But the Girl Talks are back once a month. Y'all meet me here on my channel for these Girl Talks. Outside of the Girl Talks, the vlogs will still stand, but I'm just saying how it was back before every month, new topic. That's how it's going to be. So for October, we'll talk about all of the lifestyle, personal stuff that we like to get into while also running a business, sacrifices that you should make. Um, sacrifices you may have to make we're gonna talk about all of that stuff when it comes to nails social media stuff you gotta weed out my opinion on all of that next month <laughs> I love you all if you made it to the end of the video thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video mm -hmm.